If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have the blood-bought right to a victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Welcome to Get Understanding with Ramson and Estrella Mumba. All right, the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, please. The book of Isaiah 9 and 6, I'm really stirred up about this. I hope I make progress because this is just awesome. This is the prophecy concerning the Messiah. And Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Notice Jesus, he's also the Father. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. Okay, okay. You've seen the Father, you've seen me, you've seen the... Okay, I'm going to leave these uh, revelations. Okay, so he's the Prince of Peace. That's his name, glory to God. Who your daddy? Jesus is... Glory. Okay, now, look at verse 7. I want you to see this. And of the increase of his government and peace, so Jesus would bring in a new government, and it will be increasing. But that government will also come with peace. It would come with shalom, with the ability to make you whole. The increase of your wholeness. But notice what will precede your wholeness. His government first, then your wholeness second. Uh, please notice, God is very, very thorough and very particular about the sequencing of events. Sometimes uh, you can lose, not because you haven't done the right thing, but because you've done the right things in the wrong order. Wow. Come on, somebody. You may be seeking peace, but before you first of all seek his government, there will be no increase in peace because it's first what? Of the increase of his government, and then what? Peace, there shall be no end. Is this okay if we just teach the word and get into it? So now notice, now he talks about the fact that Jesus is setting up this thing, and he will sit upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. You know why Jesus will have to come back, right? Uh, we'll have to come back to the earth and we will reign with him for a thousand years. You know, you know eschatology, right? Yes. There's going to be a thousand years when we will reign with him. Yes. He will sit on the throne of David yes. because God promised David a lineage and a never-ending royal lineage and a kingdom who's okay. Yes. And Jesus has to fulfill that. I can go into that. So, notice this. There shall be no end to establish it with judgment and justice from this time forward, even forevermore. Now, what I want to emphasize tonight as we jump into this is the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Notice who is the biggest interested party in accomplishing this. The Lord of hosts. And notice who's going to do it. Not you or I, but the zeal, the passion of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Give me the amplified version because I want to just underscore this some more. And then we can get into this. Of the increase. Now check this out. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Give me the new King Je no new international version. And then give me the message translation. You know, you know you need to work the thing, right? <laughs> Miss, Miss Hardy is about to tell me, come on, work. <laughs> that's, that's what she shouts when I'm preaching. Miss, Miss Betty will say, say, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> okay, so now check this out. The zeal of God of the Lord Almighty, God Almighty will accomplish this. So God Almighty, El Shaddai, is behind making sure there is a kingdom. So on Sunday, we began to talk about the fact that 
Jesus is building the church. God is establishing a kingdom. Come on, Daniel chapter 4 and verse, you know, chapter 2 and verse 44, you remember, right? Yeah. Jesus is building the church, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. God is establishing a kingdom. Right. And Hebrews 12, 28, we are receiving a kingdom. Yeah, yeah. We are receiving a kingdom. We're not receiving a church. We are receiving a kingdom. We're not receiving a church. We're receiving a kingdom. Now, what I want to do tonight is I want to show you God's original intent. That is why every form of government, we've had all kinds of systems from totalitarian regimes, autocratic systems, to democratic systems, to uh, uh, all kinds of ingenuities and permutations and combinations in the middle. But really, the quest for human government is man's attempt to be in control of his life and his circumstances. Every one of us in here have the yearning we have this sense in which we just feel if I could control this and take care of that, then I'd be okay. Am I telling the truth? Yes. But I, but I want to show you uh, <laughs> why that is. Why that is. Because it's not enough to have a, a, a burning sensation. For example, religion is man's attempt to reach for a supreme, supernatural being that is bigger than himself because all of us know we don't have everything it takes to master life. That's right. That's right. If, you, if you live long enough, life will show you how small you are. Yeah. Right. One of the reasons why I love being by the sea is I love to hear its sound. I love to hear its sound because it's literally, one time, I, I, I think we were in Cancun, I told my baby, let's go lie on the beach late at night. Mm -hmm. And we lay on the beach and uh, I said, can you hear it? Of course, she already knows I'm a little weird sometimes. I get too deep. Say, hear what? I say, can you hear it? Pay attention. Can you hear it? And the sea is roaring and it is loud. I said, can you hear what it is saying? It is saying, I am powerful. You are so small. If you get in here, nobody can even know where you went because I can swallow you before anybody even finds out what happened. I am so huge. And, I, and then I said, that's just exactly what life is. They throw you in. Yeah. And you can get in so deep that you don't even know which way is up. It's like when you're an amateur pilot. If you don't know how to fly that airplane and they throw you up into space, you don't know which way is up and which way is down. That's what happened to JFK Jr. And he stuck that airplane like a dirt in the ground. You remember that, right? Because he was disoriented. But that's life. what life is. Life without God. You can lose your bearings and all of a sudden you feel helpless. And yet something in you knows you can rule this. That's the frustrating thing about life. To know you have the potential to be so huge. And yet feel so small in the face of the challenges that you are faced with as you live. So. What we want to do today is notice God is behind this. Yes, he, is. he is going to accomplish this. Now, the question is, if God is going to accomplish this, if the zeal of the Lord shall perform this. In other words, this is what uh, Mordecai, you remember Mordecai and Esther, right? right. Uh, Haman and all the rest of them wanting to kill the Jews. Right. You remember, right? Okay, so Mordecai says to Esther, you have been positioned by God in the king's house so you can be an intercessor. And she started worrying about herself. The, the, the thing you must watch for as I'm teaching about the kingdom of God is this one thing. Everybody look over here. This is the one thing that will be rising up in you. By now, you should be feeling afraid that you're about to lose your life as you know it. You, you should be feeling concerned that if I get too much into all this kingdom of God business, I might, I might lose myself. Right. Come on. And, and, and control, if you don't know it, is an illusion. Because yes. the truth is, none of us are in control. Come on here. You, you, could, you could step outside there and die. That's why you should, oh my God, oh my God, we're going to die. If we get on the airplane, you could die in the bed. Come on, somebody. There's no point. That's why fear is irrational. But, but the, the real issue is, as we preach about the kingdom of God, you should at least hear yourself getting uncomfortable with losing control, which you don't have in the first place, but you think you have. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Just, just speeding up your processing power in your brain can throw you off center. Just like that. 
All of a sudden, you can't even comprehend everything because you just, come on somebody, now they've got to give you tranquilizer. Same person, wow. just the rate of activity in your chemical composition throw you, throws you off balance. So, so we are delicate creatures, just like if we move the earth one degree away from the sun, we don't freeze to death. If we move it one degree closer to the sun, we don't burn to death. God has perfectly synchronized everything that we are in the right place at the right time, and it's not the solar system that sustains us. It is the hand of God that protects us. Where we're going is, I really want you to see that it's not your paycheck that keeps you in your house. It's not the good genes that you have while you live long and you have lived strong. The real issue is, whose are you? So, I want you to check this out as we go along. Please watch out for this because you'll be tightening up in the chest. Oh my God, I'm about to lose control. And you're not good and well, you're not in control. (laughs) Amen. Like all of us, control is... uh, in degrees. But anyway, so if the zeal of the Lord is going to accomplish this, and Mordecai says to Esther, uh, do not hesitate to participate. Because even if you don't act, deliverance will still come. The question is, what will happen to your household for who knows that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? In other words, God will still find a way to deliver the Jews, but if you do not, let him use you. You are the one who's going to miss out. Since the zeal of the Lord is still going to establish a kingdom, the question isn't whether or not the kingdom will be established. The question is, will you see the benefit of the establishment of that kingdom at your house or in your life? Whether or not you participate, this is the folly of declaring yourself an atheist. Just because you say there is no God, you actually think you killed him. Wow. I mean, when when did you get so delusional that you thought your words could kill God? Come on, pal. You you see, see, that's at at the north. uh, I I, I, I talked a little about, these are profound truths, right? And you're ready ready for meat, not milk anymore. Mm -hmm. I talked about the fact that if you are asking where did God come from, first of all, you're showing your ignorance. Because God, by definition, can't come from anywhere. Everything that you say came is a product of what? Time, space, and matter. Come on. And the Bible is very clear. It gives you all three things. Time, space, and matter. In the beginning, time. God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. All three came into existence when God said. (laughs) So God didn't come out of time. Time came out of God. Matter did not come out of God. Sir Isaac Newton, with all his three laws of thermodynamics, come on, somebody, matter can neither create it nor destroy Come on, somebody, a body in motion, ten, all that stuff came out of God. Okay, I'm a, you know, you see, uh, uh, that's why you can't really be a genuine scientist and believe in uh, evolution. Right. Besides that, you are intellectually dishonest. It is still a theory, but you want it to be taught as a fact. Right, right. Wow. Amen. And if human beings are just, you know, the product of evolution and all of a sudden after millions of evil years of evolution, we are just a bunch of chemicals in our head, how come you can, you can have feelings? Right. Because you put chemicals in a pot, they don't start feeling things. <laughs> eh? And if you are just a bunch of chemicals, how can you even trust what you think that it is real? <laughs> Obviously, you're not thinking straight. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. Let's, let, let's leave the science lesson alone. But, but notice, the zeal of the Lord. <laughs> I just want you to know that Christianity doesn't mean you're not brilliant. You, you, you should be amazing. Come on, somebody. So the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. What will the zeal of the Lord accomplish? God will still establish a kingdom. And what Jesus did is what we call the redemptive order. Daniel said, in those days when Jesus is born and we are ending the Roman Empire, the God of heaven, you remember, right? Will set up a kingdom. But that's not when the kingdom was first set up. This is big. Go to Matthew chapter 25. Because now we are about to answer the question, why do I feel frustrated? Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34. 
This is talking about at the end when the wheat and the tares are separated. He said, then the king will say to those on his right hand, somebody said, that's where I'm going to be right there, at the right hand. Hallelujah. He will say, no, give me, look at this. He will say, come you blessed of my father, inherit, check this out, what? So when all is said and done, what are we going to inherit? The kingdom of God. But check this out. Which was what? Prepared for you from the what? Foundation of the world. Before the earth was set up, God's intent was to give you the kingdom. God's intent wasn't to give you a church. Before we were a twinkle in our mom and papa's eyes. Come on, somebody. God had already prepared a kingdom before the foundation of the world. And he said, I'm going to give it to you. And then he created man. Then Satan interrupted the plan of God. And now we are on our way to the restoration of God's original intent. We're going home, yo. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. See, see, you listen to me. We've been visiting, you know, somebody else's planet. The devil took over and we've been visiting. We are tenants, but we got a house. That's why if this body be dissolved, we have another house somewhere. Woo. Okay, okay, okay. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me slow down. Let, let me slow down. So, so when we talk, can I, can I slow down? Because I'm, I'm about to run. Okay, when, when, what you have to understand is um, from the foundation of the world, God had prepared for you, I like to personalize it, for me, yes. for Ramson Mumba. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. What's your name? Yes. Come on, say your name, Ramson. You say it with flair, Ramson Mumba. You, you add a little syllable on there. If you're from Mississippi, say Mississippi. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. From the foundation. Look at this. From, from, from prepared from the foundation of the world. God had prepared this from the foundation of the world. You are about 50, 60, at most 70, 80. This was given to you before the earth came into being. So when we talk about what God is doing, what the zeal of the Lord is accomplishing is his original intent. His original intent. Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Let's see what he said when he created us. Then God said, let us, all three of them, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, make man in our image and according to what? Our likeness. And let the man, notice it's plural, man and woman, let them have dominion. Come on, brothers. It's not just you that has dominion. Both of them have dominion. Come on, that's why your dominion is not complete, because you're exercising it by yourself. I'm the man of the hell. No, let them, somebody say, let them <laughs> have dominion. Okay, now, he said, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over all the cattle and over all the earth, I mean, he gave you authority even over the creeps. Every creeping thing. You check that out. Anybody who creeps you out, you got authority. Okay. He said, let them have dominion over every creeping thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. That's what he said when he created you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now look at verse 27, next verse. And notice this, so God created, just in case you didn't think you, you know, followed through. He didn't just say it and didn't do it. 27 is emphasizing, so he did it. Come on. So he created them. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am. I am. Made in God's image. And I am created after his likeness. Okay, now he created them in the image of God. And then just in case you didn't get it, in the image of God. He created it. I like the way he repeats it because this is too big. So if you still claim that you evolved from monkeys, <laughs> hello, maybe you know your relatives better than we do. But I, come on, say it, I, I am the image of God. I'm not an orphan of the apes. I'm destined for his glory. Made in his image. Come on, somebody. Would you give the Lord a shout like that? Hallelujah. Amen. 
Now notice he created the male and female. So the man is not the only one or the woman. Both of them, he created them in his image. And then look at verse 28. We're talking about a kingdom prepared from before the foundation. And God, he cursed them. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading the wrong Bible, right? Okay, just want to see if you're still here. Well, <laughs> the first thing God said to his created being, a human being, was what? I bless you. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. The first thing he said to you, whatever your name is, first thing he said to Ramson, what's your name? He said, you are blessed. Say it, I am blessed. When man first woke up, the first thing he heard was, you are what? Blessed. Say it again, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So, so no, 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 I don't care if you think you're cursed. That is a second word. God is the alpha and the omega. He had the first word, come on, and you will have the last word. And because he's the alpha and the omega, he's literally telling you letters of the Greek alphabet, the first and the last letter, come on, the beginning and the end. Whatever anybody says in the middle, it don't matter. What he said from the beginning, that's what's up. Oh, you'll leave me alone. Come on. Don't matter what your cousin said in the middle. He said you are blessed. Can I show you the last part? When Jesus left the earth, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1, as they blessed them, he ascended. The first thing God said was, you are blessed. The last thing Jesus said when he was on the planet is that you are also blessed. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sandwiched in the blessing. There's a blessing on my way in. There's a blessing on my way out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. Bless. Okay, come on, someone. Blessed when I sit up. Blessed when I stand up. Hallelujah. Blessed with health. Glory to God. That's what God said about you. So you, you need to tell yourself. Sometimes I have conversations with myself. They're the best ones. I say, Ramson Mumba, you are a blessed man. Come on, say it to yourself. What a blessed generation we are. Hallelujah. You need to embrace this and start telling yourself, I'm blessed. God didn't bring you here to suffer. He brought you here to enjoy the blessing of the Lord, which makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Tell your neighbor, no more sad stories. Because I'm blessed. Come on, shout it, I'm blessed. Oh. See, see, some of you don't know what I'm doing. We're stirring you up out of depression, stirring you up out of fear. You are blessed. Hallelujah. I'm a blessing going somewhere to happen. Woo, glory. <laughs> That's who you are. I said, that's who you are. Don't matter what your mama said, you are blessed. Don't matter what the education system said, you are blessed. And the last word over your life is that you are blessed. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. So, so now, 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 look at this. So he said, uh, and God blessed them, and he said, uh, be fruitful. Yeah. Let me see if I can calm down. Uh, I, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. You, you spent 48 years thinking you are nothing. I'm trying to tell you you are blessed. And God said, let them be fruitful. Let, let their life be productive. Yes, sir. I charge you before God and I commission you under this anointing. You will never live an insignificant life. You are fruitful. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The fruit of your womb is blessed. You have children. You have houses. You have businesses. You have comfort. Come on, son. Woo! Bless! Glory to God. Hallelujah. That, that's who we are. Blessed of the Lord. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Fruitful. Fruitful. Shata telekeha. Rando sokoma haya. Kele, kele, mahaya. Rapakara, maho. Woo! Hey, hey, okay, okay. I'm up. Bless! Glory. Glory to God. 
What a blessed people we are. Hallelujah. You need to go home, grab your husband, and grab your wife, grab your cousin, grab your friends. You need to call your girlfriends and tell them, baby girl, if nobody's there to encourage you, I got to tell you now. Got to tell you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Come on. Woo. Stop preparing for the curse. You are blessed. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I got myself stirred up tonight. Glory to God. So now, 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 what I want you to notice is he said, uh, he didn't give you a choice. He just said, be fruitful. Multiply. You will not die alone. You will multiply. You will not die in deficit. You will multiply. Shortage is not your future. Defeat is not in your future. Fear is not in your future. Come on, somebody. You are blessed. Blessed. And then he said, now you fill the earth. That's why it's unnatural for you to just want to be just in Houston. Why do you think we have different languages? Because man messed up at the Tower of Babel and wanted to stay in the same place and just build something from the same place and not scatter right across the earth. So God said, in order for me to accomplish my purpose, I'm going to have to confuse your languages. Because if you stay in the same place, what you desire and imagine to do, I can't stop you. The only way I'm going to stop you is to show you how to get to the place where you speak and don't understand one another. Because I want you to fill the earth. So it's unnatural even for a church just to want to be in Houston when we should cover the, okay. Yes, sir. The whole earth. <laughs> so he said, he said, I multiply and, and fill the earth. Tell your neighbor I'm about to overflow. Turn to the other side and tell him, in fact, right now, I'm in the overflow. I can feel myself. My cup is running over. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, somebody, somebody said, what, what's the cup running over with? Surely goodness. Hallelujah. Surely goodness is running the goodness of God. He's about to run out of the cup. Into, woo, he's about to, somebody said, what's goodness? Goodness is being able to come out of death before you are 55. Come on, somebody. Goodness is them saying you should die and you're still alive. That, okay, come on, y'all. That's the, that's the goodness of God. And it's running out of the cup. I said it's running out of the okay, okay, okay. You see, you see, we, we, we got to start thinking. This is what was prepared for us from before. From before. The foundation. And, and look, at, look at what else he said. He said, fill the earth and you subdue it. That's why we all feel frustrated that things in this world want to run us. How dare finances make you change your whole mood because you haven't got enough? How dare sickness make your whole family revolve around that sickness when you should subdue it? Oh, come on. How, 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 did, we, how did we get to that? And then he said, I'm going to be so generous. He said, uh, and, and, and let them have dominion. You didn't get it. Let them have it. I'm not going to begrudge them having it. Let, let them have it. Let them have dominion. Let, let them have it. Have dominion. You want some dominion? There you go. Let them have it. Somebody say, I got it. Say it again. I got it. I got it. Let them have it. Let them have it. Dominion. One of the reasons why I like the logo of Mercedes-Benz, you know what it means? Supremacy in the air, the land, and the sea. Glory to God. We dominate in the air. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It, it always reminds me. <laughs> Glory to God. It reminds me of Winston Churchill's speech at the second, during the Second World War when the Germans thought they were about to in, in, invade Britain. And he said, we will fight them on the beaches. We will fight them on land. And we will fight them in the air. And if they defeat us, we still won't quit. And so let us press ourselves, he said, that if the British Empire should last for a thousand years, men will still say this was their finest hour. But, but, but we will never, never, never give up. Let, let them have it. God said you should have dominion. 
Even the fish is praying that you have. The, I'm going to show you. Let, you know the word dominion? Kingdom. Let me show you what he preferred. He told Israel this when they came out of slavery. Exodus 19, verse 5. Let them have it. Blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ex- Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> Exodus 19 and verse 5. Check this out. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandments, then you will be a special treasure. Glory be to God. A special treasure to me above all the peoples of the earth for all the earth is mine. And check out what he wanted you to do in verse 6. This was his original intent. And he thought he would get it with the church of the Israelites, but he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Therefore, to as many as received him, he gave power. Okay, okay, I'm I'm out here. Okay, Okay, you know, if the Jews had accepted Jesus as the Messiah, we wouldn't have a chance. So the scripture says God in his wisdom made them experience partial blindness so that by them rejecting Jesus, we would have a chance as the Gentiles. Come on. We, that was a wild branch, an olive would be grafted into the original vine. Come on. So that we can have an opportunity. That's why he said, if you think Israel are a stiff-necked people, it is God who twisted their heart so that he can give you a chance. And just like he twisted their heart to give you and I a chance, he will untwist twist their heart so that like Joseph one day after seeing him for a lot of time he will take off his coat and they will know this is our brother this is our brother this is the one we sent to Egypt okay okay I'm gonna I'm leave you all about but let me let me let me leave that alone so 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 notice what he said he said this is what will happen if you obey me if Joseph did not reveal himself the first time they came to Egypt no Israel couldn't see Jesus the first time he came he had to cover him. Okay, I'm going to leave this alone. Kappa Toro Mahai. And, and Joseph had the steward of his house who never even talked about himself. The steward of Joseph's house is the Holy Ghost. He doesn't draw attention to himself. He points to Jesus. He is anointed to take what belongs to Jesus. And get, okay, I'm gonna, let me get out of that. This is me. And so, and so, so now, now notice. So, oh my God. Are you getting this? Can I just jump just to come down a little bit? Hallelujah. You all listen why I'm jumping. Can I tell you why I'm jumping? My daddy gave me a kingdom. Before I showed up, I never got in trouble and any kind of struggle. His original intent was you should have a kingdom. Look, look, look what he said. If you obey me, you are going to be to me. What are you going to be? What are you going to be? Lord Jesus. He didn't even want a kingdom of servants. Oh, you leave me alone. Many people, when they hear a kingdom, they feel they are going to be subject to a sovereign and he's going to dominate them. That's not God's idea. He wanted a family. A kingdom of priests. And a holy nation. Imagine God. God wanted you to be a kingdom of priests. Priests minister to God on behalf of the people. Prophets speak from God to the people. But the priest's original and primary assignment is to pay attention to that God. And we were born to minister, to be a kingdom of priests. So that every time, that's why you hear me say, can you, do you know how big it is that you and I can bless the Lord? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Mere flesh and blood yes. to stand in his presence and bless the Lord. That's why I can't understand how somebody can be in God's presence. Come on, Pastor. I just, in, in the first place, if it weren't even for the blood of Jesus, you'd be a greasy spot on the carpet. That's why I'm not doing that. Every time I come, oh. Yes, sir. What a privilege. Yes. A kingdom of priests. So, from before the foundation of the world, he chose us. And he prepared a kingdom. Now, 
we said the word kingdom is a composite word. King and domain. King and domain, or the realm where you exercise your dominion. And he said, let them have it. The reason why human beings can never have mastery. All of life, if you want to reduce it down, is the search for power. Wow. Mastery. Not only over your own life, but over your circumstances. And ultimately, we are trying to master death. You just look at the TV. Oh, we will beat cancer. Oh, we will find something with heart disease. Oh, we will clone your liver. Oh, what it is, is we want to ultimately control our destiny. Yeah. Because something in us tells us we were not created to be under the circumstances. Right. We were created to be above oh. only. We were given domain. He said, let them have it. Now, now we spend our lives worrying about things like money when money shouldn't even rule your life. But we have come so low yeah. that yeah. we are under the dominion of somebody's opinion. You spend your whole life worried about what they said in 1982. And you haven't moved away just because somebody said it when God said, let, let them have dominion over the entire creation. The, the reason we, st we struggle, the reason we are right now in the race for the White House and our democracy is because we are trying to get power so we can control and govern ourselves. The reason that we talk about we're going to have peace and we will find it, the reason we will never find it is because it's not within us. That's why every civilization has had any or some kind of religion. Because they've recognized after they've tried everything that the solution is not in us. Right, right. Paul came to Antioch and uh, he found them worshiping Athenus and they are directed an altar to the unknown God. The book of Acts 17. They didn't even know. And Paul, being an excellent apologist, a defender of the gospel, theologically speaking, he has to start from where they are. He said, men and women of Athens, why do you even start to worship this thing that you don't even know, the unknown God? Let me tell you what it is. We are actually all children of God. In other words, Ecclesiastes says God has placed eternity in your heart. In other words, the thing that bothers you is not this piece of wood that you are worshiping. It is something bigger in you that says you are not from here. That says you belong to somebody else. That says you are bigger than your circumstances. So he said, I don't even know why you're searching for God because that's all we do. All of us go through life groping and searching for him like men in the dark place. You remember the book of Acts, right? And he said, and yet we are searching for somebody who's already everything that we are and we are already everything he is because in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our big. Yet we are searching for him, yet he's on the inside. Okay, okay, I'm, see, I'm a, I'm going to leave you alone. Why you search for God when he's on the inside of you? The issue is you are hungry for his true manifestation and his kingdom. So you erect an altar to money or an altar to some substance abuse, an altar to self-pity, an altar to education. But the truth is we are like men searching in the dark, trying, trying to figure out who we are and where we came from. And yet in him we live and in him we move and in him we have our very being. Because before we came, your spirit knows he set up a kingdom for you. Your head and my head are catching up. But your spirit, it knows we belong to the kingdom. I'm trying to tell you, we, 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 it knows so well. David said, you make your face to shine on me and that my soul knows very well. Something in me knows that I am yours. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave that. That's why he came to Hebrews. Can I park at Hebrews 5? Because we're not, Hebrews 13 and 5. Because some of you, you know, let me park here because we got work to do. Look at this. So, so Hebrews 5, he said, here is what you mess up. You are now walking around saying, uh, let your conduct be without covetousness. Covetousness is you thinking that you got to take something from somebody because you may not have your own. Right. And he's saying, you don't need that because you already have your own. 
So let your life be. Then you say, why do you want to look at somebody else's wife? I'll get you one that's better than that. One that, but why you want to take somebody's, why are you worrying just about somebody's car? I can get you one that has got joy built into it. Come on, somebody. You don't need to covet what anybody else says. Let your life be without covetousness. But be content with such things as you have. Now, are you ready for this? Because I'm about to shout. For himself. Hallelujah. This is not an angel. This is a personal guarantee. He himself has said. Glory to God. He, he didn't just think it. He said it. Yes, you leave me alone. He himself has said, I will never leave you. Know what? Forsake you. He, he himself, he himself said that. This is like Isaiah 53. He himself bore our sicknesses. He, he carried our diseases. And then he himself said, I will never. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you really understand what the sickness in life is. The sickness in life is feeling alone like you don't belong to anybody and nobody will come for you. And if you died, nobody would even carry you and you don't matter. And he's trying to say, I will never, I am saying to you, your mother, can a mother forget a little child? Maybe she can, but I will never. He himself has said, I will never. Never. That's a double negative. Oh, man, that's the, the Hebrew, the, the, that's... Double, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. Double negative. It never will. There's no possibility that you do that. He himself has said, I will what? Never, never what? Leave you. No what? Forsake you. Okay, good. That's what he said. Now let's see what your response should be. He said it, so you should say the next verse. Hallelujah. Look at verse 6. He said that so that you may now what? So that you may what? Boldly say, The Lord is my helper. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to say it first so you can boldly say, The Lord is my helper. Not the government, not my DNA, not my education, not my salary. The Lord is my helper therefore I will not fear what can man do unto me because in him we live in him we okay, okay, okay. when's the last time stuff was challenging you and you stood your ground and you said he himself has said uh, Ramson Mumba I will never leave you no forsake you. And those who fight you, they're fighting you. And those who come against you in one direction, first of all, I'll cause them to be defeated before you, and then they will flee from you in seven directions because I have said I will never leave you. No what? So that you may what? Time for you to get some boldness. How long I demo, please? Boldly say, well, seek no. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, you come from the tribe of Judah. And Jesus is the liar from the tribe of Judah. Don't you dare the devil be the loudest in your circumstances. You need to roar in your house. You, you, you need to go in that house and tell the devil this is the last time you bring strife between me and my husband, between me and my wife, between me and my children. Come on. The Lord is my helper. This is the last time I cry myself to sleep thinking I'm not fruitful, thinking I'm not blessed. The Lord is my helper. Boldly say it. Okay, okay, okay. A, okay. I said boldly say it. How, how you say that? Because we know from the foundation of the world. Ephesians says, listen, I'm on, I, I'll leave that alone. Yeah. If, if he, can, you, can I just tell you? I'm, I'm sorry, this is the way I'm feeling. Can I, can I tell you? Because somebody, I want to shout it from the rooftop, but I can't get there. He chose us in him from before the foundation of the world that we should be holy 
and blameless. I don't care how many things you've done that brought you blame. He, before you ever did anything, he already chose you. And him, okay, come on somebody, that you should be holy and what? Blameless. And he prepared a kingdom. And then he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, now, you, you can't say it because, well, in 1985, I had an abortion. No, boldly say it. The Lord is my helper. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord is my helper. Glory to God. Stand to your feet if you can. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and begin to give him praise. Stand to your feet. If you're wondering how you're going to make it. If you're wondering how you're going to be productive and fruitful. Just say it, the Lord is my helper. Rakando parale. Come on, speak in the Holy Ghost. I need you to hear. I need to hear you speak in the Holy Ghost. Rakando. Rekamahaya. Ramba moroleke. Le 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 maha. Rapakaso. Come on, speak in the Holy Ghost. Don't be passive. Speak. 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 You boldly say it. Resendo, Ramando Catalama, Brekende Kelemo, Paraziva Rolama, Manda Roma Haya, Rekelia Kama. Thank you for watching Get Understanding with Ramson and Estrella Mumba. This broadcast has been made possible by friends, partners, and viewers like you in this area. We trust that you've been blessed and thank you in advance for your continued prayers and generous financial support. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.